Hello, it has been a while since we've spoken. It has been a while since you've probably seen this face in your subscription box and we're gonna be talking all about it and also exciting things to talk about happening in the future. So I just wanted to like not waste any time and just get into everything. I will be looking at my phone occasionally because I've had to do dot points about what I'm gonna speak about, otherwise I will waffle because I am a waffler when I speak. So we just wanna like get into what's going on. So we will talk firstly about where I've been and why I've had a time off YouTube. But before I do that, I just wanna say thank you for clicking on this video. I just wanna thank you for watching this video because I know it's been a long time since you see me pop up and it just means a lot to me that you wanna hear about what's been going on. So first of all, most importantly, thank you just for being here. I really, really, really am grateful for it. Um, I do feel very anxious right now <laughs> filming because this feels so unnatural. To be honest, filming has never felt natural to me. Um, <laughs> I need to like lower the shoulders and like relax a little bit. We want to talk about my time off YouTube and a lot of it has to do with my health. I have been posting a lot about this on my Instagram again. So I will put up my Instagram here and I'm also going to put up the host, the, ho the post and the highlights, that's what I was host. So the post and the highlights, I would highly recommend if you want like a much more in-depth overview of what this point is, go on my Instagram, you will find it there. But essentially, um, I had a rough, rough six months um, and I'm still healing, which is a bit of a, ugh. it's just been so long, oh my God. Okay, so I'll try and summarize this as much as I can but the people that did my surgery for my breast augmentation did not look after me very well. And unfortunately, I have now got a lot of problems. I have a deformity on my left side because after my first surgery, what had happened is that my left pectoral muscle was cut off my bone and was just hanging. And then an implant was in there, pushing it around and then everything collapsed and I became really wonky. And for about, five months every single day i had this sharper sharper sharpest pain on the left side of my chest it didn't go away it was just like this awful chronic pain and it would just bring me to tears almost daily i just couldn't do anything i couldn't really lift my arms above my head i did everything i could on the internet i suppose at the time to sort of like pretend like it wasn't happening you all know what it's like with instagram with youtube with anything TikTok get into the, you know, the rhythm of let's pretend like life is great, even though I'm in chronic pain, let's just smile through it and no one will notice. That's kind of what I did with my breast augmentation vlogs. I specifically remember they're private now because obviously I've been through a lot. You guys saw the second I came out of my surgery, I'm in the car with Em and I'm like, I have the strongest pain on the left side, right here, right here. I told the nurse as soon as I woke up, no one cared. I left without painkillers. You guys will hear all about this story on my explant story, but Long story short, um, I know disfigured is like a pretty intense word, but I just, oh my God, I was so sad by seeing what had happened and like my implant had, was falling out of my breast pocket, which is obviously going towards your ribs and the muscle issue. And I had this like double bubble thing and I had all these complications, um, so much other stuff as well that's happened since, like I've been losing a lot of hair. It's something that I'm really struggling with at the minute. Um, my hair is thinner than it's ever been and I've basically just been battling and battling and battling. I ended up having three surgeries this year. Um, one, uh, sorry, one was December, my initial breast augmentation that I had a revision, didn't really do anything because you can't repair the muscle. And then now a few months later, um, my only option, because I went to see someone not affiliated with the first people um, who told me in their professional opinion, I had no chance of saving like having implants or anything because the damage internally was too bad. So I had to have an explant and have my implants removed. I had that done about six or seven weeks ago and I have the full journey of it on my Instagram. So it affected my life in so many ways. I couldn't work because I was just so depressed. I was, you know, in so much pain physically. Aesthetically, by looking at me, I was 
out of proportion, disfigured. I felt so just like, yeah, someone had just, <laughs> oh, I don't even know. It was the hardest thing. And it still is. Um, I lost a lot of confidence. I've really struggled with my mental health. When it was like in the depths of it, that's when I was so desperate to just go to my family in Australia. I was so depressed. I was so low and I can't really explain to you how much a like constant pain just messes with your head and you're like, I can't escape this pain. I just needed that family time because I was, I was just, yeah. Past the point of return, past the point of return at that point, I was just not in a very good state. So I looked after myself by going offline, doing anything I could to go home. I spent so much money to go home, but it was so worth it. And it just was like a very healing time for me. Sorry, I'm getting like top lips wet. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like shiny or not. But when I film, I get really anxious. Um, which I'll explain in a minute. But yeah, the full explant stuff, I will obviously divert you again to Instagram to get the proper story on that because it's not something that I like talk about over and over and over again. I feel like in my private life with all the people in my life, we've, I don't know, I just feel like I've been talking about it so much. I just don't want it to define me anymore. So please go over there to see it. But yeah, it was, it's just been a really hard time. And obviously I used to do lots of fashion things with like misguided and stuff like that. And just because my body was um, ruined, if you want to put it that way, I couldn't do anything like that. So this year, 2021 has been very strange, but how I spent this year, to me, this is a year of healing. I've just really taken it slow, given my body and given myself what it needs and given the rest. And I've had such a like awakening in so many different aspects of my life. Um, a lot of that is fueled by having a health scare of any kind can really, really throw you into looking at life in a brand new perspective. And that's what I definitely have. So no matter how horrible and how much money I've lost and all that kind of, you know, stuff, I think everything is a lesson and there's always some way to look at it that will provide you with positivity and comfort. And for me, the biggest thing was learning to respect my body for keeping me alive, learning to appreciate being healthy and realizing like the bullshit in life versus what actually matters and focusing on what matters, no matter how that might look to someone else. I'm so sick of feeling that I have to appeal to someone else. You know, someone else wants this from me or wants that from me or expects this of me. And I thought, well, what do I want from me? And what do I expect of me? Like I'm nearly 27. Why am I always living on other people's terms? Like it should be me in the driving seat of my life and figuring out what I wanna do. I don't wanna be 60 or 70 years old lying in bed, feeling like I can't do the things I wish I could have done and looking back and having so much regret that there's so much in my life I wanted to do that I didn't do because it wasn't on someone else's plan for me or term for me. And a lot of the time, these other people's plans that you think they have for yourself are not actually their plans for yourself. It's you projecting what you think others expect of you. But I can guarantee I can be like, I think people online want this or this or this of me. That's just me making it up in my head half the time because we can be our own worst enemy and our own bully. So we need to sit down with ourselves and say, look, I bloody love you. We've gone through so much together. We've always come out the other side. I'm proud of you. What do you want to do today? What would make you happy? Should we have a slow day? Should we play some games? Should we go out with friends? And just become your own best friend. And that's been a huge thing for me this year. Every day, no matter what day I will hold myself accountable to sit down and do my daily gratitudes and God that changes your life no matter how rubbish the day is you sit down and you write five things at least five things that day that you're grateful for or made you happy and even if you're like oh nothing did I guarantee even just like some chocolate that you ate you know what I mean like so grateful just to have that experience of eating that chocolate and along with feeling like I've woken up and I'm you know <laughs> becoming the next version of myself the next step of myself 
you have to hold yourself accountable for your own toxic behavior and your own issues and your own problems that you have created for yourself. So I've really had the time this year to sit down with myself and hold myself accountable for any dumb stuff that I've done in my life or things that I do to others that aren't fair or are projecting or are toxic and really sit down and be like, look, where is this coming from? Doing the shadow work, figuring it out. What does this feeling remind you of? And once you figure out what it reminds you of and you go back and back and back and back, then you find the initial trigger and then that's the thing you wanna heal. So I've been doing lots of just sitting with myself and being like, look, I feel really angry towards someone right now, but am I angry at them? Or am I angry because it reminds me of another situation where I felt disrespected? So <laughs> there's been lots of like spiritual awakenings. There's been lots of sitting down with myself, figuring out stuff. Bean's constantly barking at birds. <laughs> that hasn't changed. Um, a big thing that comes with that for me is stuff like my alcohol intake, my diet, my lifestyle. I only recently, I'd say from my ex plan, and I had for a little while in my head this feeling of this voice if I were to have a few drinks out with friends, you know when the, your limit comes and like, you're like, oh, I'll just have another shot or whatever. There's a voice saying, you sure you want to be hungover tomorrow? <laughs> Are we going to do this again? Are you going to ride off another Sunday? And I don't know about you guys, but since the whole pandemic, lockdowns, all that stuff, my hangover is 50 times worse and the anxiety is horrendous. Waking up and being like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I say? I'm so embarrassed, deleting stories, all that stuff. And then sitting down finally with myself after so long of just thinking about it and going, look, we might need to change something here. It's fun to go out, have a drink with friends, have a glass of wine. But I'm now saying to myself, we're focusing on health. We're focusing on having a rich, healthy, full, happy life. Is drinking so much that you forget about your social anxiety really... <laughs> A good thing or is that masking something else sorry one second can you go on your bed please i'm trying to talk <laughs> please not even like dinner time so please let me talk thank you love you um so i don't know if you've ever had that feeling before and you just woken up and you've just gone why am i doing this it wasn't even worth the hangover for the whole day and I know getting older hangovers are worse but I am a very shy quite a socially anxious person and when I have a drink it's Dutch courage and I feel confident and I feel like I can dance around and like be my best self and people tell me oh I love you when you're drunk Danny and all that and that kind of sits in your head of like oh wow people like me more when I drink I don't drink much at all unless I go out and then I can even have two or three drinks and I have a really bad hangover and I can't explain it it's like I've been doing so much healing for myself that I really like who I am now and I'm really good friends with myself and I almost feel like I betray myself when I can feel like that hangover is coming and it makes my anxiety so bad and it makes my mood so bad so I've just really been like, all right, I'm going to be kind to myself. And it's crazy because in the last month, I must have had maybe two glasses of wine. Because as it stands right now, I've not gone cold turkey, but I've definitely stopped buying wine, like bottles of wine for myself. I haven't bought a bottle of wine for myself in about two months. Because, you know, going out with friends on the weekend then turns into like having a glass of wine in the evening to like relax. And that's all well and good if you're in a mentally stable place. But because I've not been it just made me feel more depressed, more anxious. So I identified that within myself and that is like a new chapter for me that I'm a little bit, um, not like hesitant, scared, I don't know. Like I'm a little bit like, oh, what do I say if I'm out with friends and like, why aren't you drinking? Which I highly doubt they will, but you gotta think about these things. If your friends are good friends, they'll understand that you still can have fun and enjoy it even if you're not drinking as much as they are or if you're just having one glass of wine or something like that so I'm focusing on like the mocktail life at the minute which is really nice I can't even explain it to you it's like I just woke up this year and I was like what are we doing <laughs> is it working don't think it is I've changed my diet completely oh my goodness I deleted uber eats and delivery like a month ago 
best decision ever. Please do it. It means you actually have to have all the stuff on the fridge that's like shoved to the side that you keep not having and you keep ordering Uber Eats if you just delete the app. I have saved so much money by not ordering food all the time. And I actually have to prepare my food every day, make my food every day. And for me, it's like health over abs. I'm not doing any kind of like, oh, I must focus on my body looking a certain way. I genuinely don't give a shit. I'm like, my body's healthy. Cool. All I care about. Don't need any kind of big ass or big boobs or abs or anything like that for me. Because right now my focus is on just like feeling better. And I know I have a lot more stuff that I need to go down in terms of like figuring out my hair loss doing thyroid checks, hormone checks, blood checks, all that stuff. Like I know there's a lot more to happen still. So in the meantime, I'm just sort of like, let's, uh, let's be kind to ourselves, please. I don't know if you guys have felt similar since lockdowns with the alcohol thing too. I mean, I can have a Red Bull and be like bouncing around happy. I know Red Bulls aren't like good for you either, but I just don't know. There's something about alcohol at the minute that my body's just like, mm. It just almost feels like, not like poison, <laughs> what kind of is, but I'm like, there's nothing else in life that I have to write off a day after by having. So should I really be doing this? Or should I claim my Sunday and wake up fresh in the morning and take beans out, go out for breakfast? And I'm kind of like, yeah, that sounds a little bit more appealing and not having a five day hangover and just hating myself. That's actually really, really helped. And if any of you are in a similar situation where you want to do it, but you're a little bit scared, like I am, Cause I'm not saying like I'm sober, sober, sober cause I will have a glass of wine here and there in the future, I'm sure. But I just don't want to get drunk enough to be hungover anymore. I just want to have two and then that's it. I know that I have the strength to do that and I hope I don't just like, and even if I do slip up here or there, like I will forgive myself because I know that it is my mission and my journey to just be healthier anyway. So I don't want to be too harsh on myself, but I just really wondered if any of you guys feel that way too, because I just feel very different after these last, well, this last year and a half. And alcohol just, I don't know, it's different. And it's so expensive in London. It's like 20, 20 pounds for a cocktail in London, which is like $40 for a cocktail. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. On Instagram, you would have seen as well, I've been doing lots of art. Creativity and art for me is ultimate healing mode. I've been doing lots of that. I've been playing Zelda. If you guys have any Switch recommendations or stuff I should play, please let me know. I restarted Zelda Breath of the Wild and oh, it just is the best thing. And I listen to the soundtrack every day as a journal. Um, I don't know if you guys grew up like Ocarina of Time on like N64 and stuff, but like for me, it's the most beautiful, amazing game. So I've been playing that nonstop. And just spending this time healing. I've just really needed it. I've needed the healing and I've needed the rest. So this then jumps over to, so why haven't I been on YouTube? So I think you can gather just by everything I've just told you that this year created me to feel very sensitive and very emotionally vulnerable. So because of just everything happening and stuff I was going through, I was already in a bad enough place I don't know why my name's there. Um, but the thought of then subjecting myself to go on a platform to film, and you know that when you film a video, the thing why it makes me so anxious as well is because every time I film, I get so triggered and full of adrenaline of like, so what's the first negative thing that's gonna happen from this? You know, there's gonna be someone that takes this part and turns it into this or turns it into that, and like, it just makes me, like, I don't know if I'm too sensitive for YouTube. I don't know if I just, don't know, I just felt very emotionally vulnerable and my mental health was really low that to come on the internet and subject myself to more scrutiny and opinions and comments and stuff. I just thought it wasn't worth it. It would have pushed me too far. Um, it's something that I still struggle with immensely and I do want to get therapy on how much it just like fucks you up <laughs> being on the internet seven years of almost daily messages of being told something awful about your appearance, your personality, your private life, people messaging partners, friends, exes, family members, the most horrible things. It just really is a lot to 
deal with and for me I haven't made any money in ads I haven't done ads since I think it was like January so it's been about six months I've not made an income other than AdSense and old videos so I've really been living off my savings this year it's just really difficult because I love that my platform gives me the opportunity to connect with other people primarily on mental health or just about their lives or just to be there to listen to people and help them feel understood and it's really hard to like if that's your mission you're like for me my sole mission is just that and connection not like numbers success money i think anyone that knows me well enough will know that's not my drive in life obviously you need money to live but connection is what drives me through life and just helping other people so the thing is for me it makes me really sad to see the stories that people make up about me which if you can imagine you're just sort of trying your best and then you have stories that are made up about you and then you have people that don't know you genuinely bashing your character off a fabricated story and I don't come on the internet and defend myself I don't call people out I don't um, dissect arguments I've learned it's best to just like leave people to it and walk away but it's so hard when there's things that are being said about you online that are so untrue and it just makes you so sad that you're like wow these people are genuine they genuinely believe I'm someone that they've made up in their head that's not me at all and I just get really really sad for me I can't I can't look or read or anything at this. I know you have, guys have seen about every, this, ugh, every single, oh, I'm getting so nervous. Every single influencer has, you know, websites that are designed to tear them apart. You've got podcasts, you've got Instagram pages, all sorts of stuff. I understand and I'm a consumer of keeping up with like YouTube tea. So I get it. I get why it's interesting. You know, I watch H3 podcast. I love that podcast. A lot of that podcast is centered around drama, so I'd be a hypocrite to be like, oh, you know, people can't talk about others on the internet. But when it's like for legitimate crimes and you know, <laughs> all that stuff, it's a little bit different. But for me, it's like, it's when I haven't even come online and then people are like making up stories and people, um, I've been told, I say I've been told because my friends kind of fill me in about stuff, but I don't like to look at it. I've gone through a lot with the whole issue with my breasts. And then some people think I'm lying, some people make up stories about that, and some people will attack my character. When I just sit here and I think like, I've had a really tough time, can we not use something that is part of my health, my private life, as tea? You know, like, it's just not... This is so hard to talk about. Because even just saying, talking about the stuff perpetuates it, you know? Um, it's just difficult when you don't even give people information about your life. I'm so private about people that have really done me wrong. I could sit here and I kind of wish sometimes I could just give, a, give you a story time about the most insane stuff that was done to me last year like other people did to me that I just don't. And I know a lot of people would, but I don't because I feel like that's very bad karma and it would just come back and bite me. And I, I've, I'm protecting a lot of people by not talking about things that have happened or things they've done and they've just gotten away with it and, and no one knows any different about their character. And I just don't want to use my platform to drag other people down. I want to use my platform to raise people up and um, that's why I'm always very private and then even though I am private you know you go through so much and you're private about that you kind of protect the people that have done you wrong and then there's still people being like well maybe she did this or she did and you're just like oh my god please just like oh and then you get to a point where you're like god people scrutinize everything if I breathe the wrong way I'm a murderer and all this stuff that you're just like I just can't I just can't even be on this platform right now because I can't survive as a human being and I can't do anything right no matter what I do it's not right and then it just got me into a really really bad place mentally 
as well as everything else I was going through, that the thought of YouTube terrified me. Oh my God, the thought of coming on here, like this has taken me like six months to come back on because of how messed up my mental health has been from my health and also just everything else. I know the thing is, all that stuff will never stop. If you have a platform, people will scrutinize you. I understand that, but I'm, I had to sit with myself and be like, look, Danny, maybe you're just too sensitive for this. Like, maybe it's time to just stop giving people any information about your private life. Maybe it's time to just focus on something else, focus on a new direction. And yeah, it's just difficult. When someone fabricates a story, I don't defend myself. I don't know, maybe I should come on and defend myself, but I just hate drama. I hate it. And I hate like people, you know, showing private information on the internet. It's just such bad karma, right? And then they have an audience that then sends an influx of hate to me. And then you're just like, I just can't do anything, right? And you're just in this little bubble and you're like depressed and you're like, oh, I can't do this. And it's just hard. I wish I could be super carefree on camera and I wish I could just be like, I don't care. But it's hard. And I've tried so hard to like learn to fall in love with myself and be my own, be my own best friend. And to have people just like, it just feels like there's people everywhere on top of me just screaming at me, being like, you're disgusting, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, that side of your face, like, you're a liar, you're this, you're that, uh, problematic. And I'm just like, I, I'm just trying my best, please. Um, I don't know. It's just really, really sad. And I just wanted to create content for beautiful people like you that just watch my videos because they feel like they have a friend in me and they want to connect with someone on the internet and that's what I want to do and I really hope I can get to a point of just being like just doing that without being so just I don't know so sad by all the downsides of the internet because there's so many positives as well but I've just been going through a lot mentally this year that I almost feel really scared going on YouTube because I'm just so vulnerable and I'm out of a protection for myself, I've been like, oh, I don't know if it's a good idea. I obviously couldn't come on when everything was bad with my boobs because I wasn't ready to talk about it yet. And it just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we move on to another topic, please? It's just like, oh. But yeah, it's a weird one as well. Like, you remember how thick my hair was, like, and long it was? I keep getting all this hair dropping down and stuff, but I just don't want to make myself any more stressed or anything like that. But the thing is, there is content that I do want to create still, but I need to sort of even just put this out there, see how I feel once this is out, see the feedback and then kind of go from there. But next topic, next topic, because it's been a bit of a rubbish year, right? And I wish, I mean, I wish you knew about all the other stuff that I haven't spoken about from my private life, like things that were done, because then it would add a lot more layers. I feel like you have this much information, but there's been like this much that's happened. Um, so unfortunately you don't know everything and I just can't tell you everything. I just don't know if I can because it just throws so many people under the bus, even though I was as nice as I could be. <laughs> I just, I feel like it's by karma, I don't know, but anyway, when I went to Australia, it was just so needed, as you can probably imagine, like, being with my family was the most healing thing in the world, and I also went there for another reason, and I was there for a long time for another reason, and a few people have predicted this, perhaps, not Beans is coming to say hi as well, can I say hello? Cool. Or maybe not, never mind, <laughs> yeah, a few people have predicted, um, I am gonna go home, I'm gonna stay with my family and I'm gonna move back with my parents. I can't afford to pay the rent here. I can't afford to live here anymore. I have just been very, I've gone through a very damaging year, but I've, I'm doing my absolute best to come out of this a much stronger version of myself and a much more in love version of myself and a much more grown up version of myself. And that is what I'm so proud of for me. But I do feel the next step in that is returning to family. So yes, I will be going back to Australia. I'll be going back to Melbourne. I'll be going and living with my family. Um, I have absolutely no idea about timelines. All I want in life is a really slow, happy, creative, 
beautiful life where I can go to the beach, I can do my art, I can be with my family, I can work a job that I love. So whether I kind of steer this in a new direction or I do another job, I don't know yet, we'll have to see. Just taking life slow, because God, the lockdown taught me like, there's so much in my life I still want to do. And also naturally, like you kind of think your parents are invincible forever and ever and ever, but then you realize that they are actually getting older. Like my dad is now in his sixties and I think, God, there's so much I still want to do with him. And while we're fit and young and able, like this is the time to do it. Obviously living in London for me was amazing for my first few years before COVID struck. There were so many amazing events here. I've met the best friends for life here. The influences here are amazing. Like everything was so nice and the brands, everything. So I'm so grateful for my journey here. But obviously for all of us, like since 2020, I just feel like I've been paying a lot of rent to just sit inside and not be able to do anything. And of course it's affected everyone's work, but yeah i just look out the window and i'm like god the things i do to like be with my family be on the beach be around that unconditional love because i've been alone in here for like five weeks now five or six weeks um my house my m is traveling at the minute she's doing solo travel um so i've just been sat here for a long time on my own and just been thinking a lot and i decided that i was going to go back uh start of this year so me going there and coming back, the reason why I've come back to the UK is because I'm finalizing everything, getting my lease finished, getting my furniture shipped out, getting beans sorted, like that's why. I know for a few people it was quite like a, why did you go back to the UK from Australia? It's because I needed to pack up my life and bring it back over there. So that's why I've had to go there, come back and then get everything and then move properly because it's such a big move that I didn't want to just do it on a whim. So I had to go and like go for a few months and really, really, really figure it out because I am, um, I'm so, so excited for a new chapter in my life. It's such a like bittersweet thing because I'm going to miss my friends here so much. I've made some of the most amazing friends, but I know we're friends for life. So no matter what, I'll see them. But there's so much that I want to do still, which makes me feel like, will I only be in Australia for a few months and then come back? Or not a few months, it'll probably be like a year until they open the borders, whenever they open the borders. Um, but I do think realistically, I'll probably be there for like a year and then figure out my life. Whether I come back here or I do something else, I don't know yet, or I might stay. Like, I'm not saying like, I'm going to go back to Australia forever and ever and ever because I don't know yet. Like, I'm very lucky I have two passports, so I'm able to live there, I live here. Um, and jump between the two but a lot of my friends are moving back home as well so we're all kind of leaving London and dispersing so it's kind of like the right time I guess so I am um, I'm sorry if it seems like I'm really down I think it's just because I had such a heavy topic with the YouTube stuff and like me being emotionally vulnerable that I want to be more excited for this portion but I'm just a bit, I don't know it really kind of made me sad so I'm sorry about that but I am very excited I promise you <laughs> um, it's just that like Oh God, it's just a heaviness. You can probably feel it. And I'm doing everything I can to get this heaviness off me. I'm like, please, I'm trying to get this like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this light from within me and just bring it out and get rid of the heaviness and the darkness. And that's what I'm trying to do. But I am excited, I promise. I'm sorry if it comes across like I'm not, I am. But yeah, I'm gonna miss my friends a lot. There's so much that I wanna do. Oh, there's so much traveling I wanna do. Ever since I moved to the UK, I wanted to do like a Euro summer. I just wanted to like, you know, when, oh my God, if any of you have been around since I did Kentucky vlogs, you know, when I did that. I wanted to do that again for so long in my twenties. I wanted to go like Croatia, Spain, Italy, all that kind of stuff and do like full like summer in Europe and do it single. The first three years that I was here, I was in a relationship so I couldn't do it. Um, and then COVID. So I never got my chance and all I've wanted to do is just travel around Europe. But unfortunately, a lot of my friends have not been able to. Um, and then doing it solo, it, we had the pandemic. It's just like, it's just never been the right time. And I'm like, no, I don't wanna, I wanted to do this in my 20s. So I've got three years left that I need to come back and do my Euro summer and do all that kind of stuff. So let's hope I still get to do it. <laughs> let's hope. So, there's a lot of stuff that I've wanted to just do and it's just unfortunate, but let's pray that like the world will soon come back to normal eventually. Like I'm fully vaccinated now. 
And I just hope that like things get a bit easier for us all soon. <laughs> So I just need that slow healing time with my parents. And if someone says to me, what does your future look like, your ideal future? I genuinely feel it has nothing to do with like acquiring something of materialistic brain just turned off then. <laughs> it has nothing to do with materialistic items or saving for a certain car or a big house or anything like that. I genuinely want to live on a farm with a very simple life where I grow my own crops and I do art and I, there's some way I can get an income. But I have like 50, not 50, I'm exaggerating, but I have a bunch of rescue dogs and give them the best life ever. And we go to the beach every day and like take life super slow. I've sort of hit this time in my life where I'm like, wow, we have one life and are we meant to live it just like saving up or working the whole life for a few hours on the weekend of having fun and I just can't help but I just think like why can't we just be like other animals are and we can just live a slow life, be present, be looking at nature, feel so appreciative for the world around us and just like enjoy a slow paced life and I know it sounds like I'm got the same energy of wanting to be like a little old lady on the porch in her rocking chair but I genuinely feel like I'm already in that phase I don't even know if I want to have kids anymore I always thought it was something that I wanted but I genuinely feel with the state of the world I don't really know if I want to bring kids into this world and I just think I'm gonna have lots of beautiful rescue dogs that are living with me and we're living our best life and yeah eventually a partner as well but whether I have a partner or I don't I know I'll be happy so I don't know I just have a very different I have different values from what I used to have I used to want so many things and then lockdown really made me realize what's important and what doesn't matter and for so long I've tried to be like other people or feel like I had to fit in a certain way and buy materialistic items and look like them and be like them and yeah it's fun and it's nice but the core of who I am is just so different and I've just honored that a lot more this year so I actually obviously because I've spent a lot of this year gaming as well I a lot of people are asking if I'll do a twitch and I think that's something that could be really fun I have this discord which I'll tell you about in a sec and a lot of people in my discord are like saying that I should do like life is strange in September on twitch and I feel like that would be something I'd really love to do because I love gaming I think you see a proper different side of me like you did with the sims and stuff like that because I don't know I tried so hard in my 20s to be someone to be another person and not be myself if that makes sense so I'm myself now and I'd love to do like gaming stuff but yeah let me know twitch that kind of stuff if that excites you but I'll get into the discord thing soon too what inspires me content wise like I would love to do something like a podcast I don't, it's weird isn't it, because you're like, it's just me talking. <laughs> you're like, who's going to listen to me talking? I would love to do that, but I don't really know where to start or how to get onto something like a podcast. Podcast? What is a podcast? A podcast? <sighs> I'm going to have to wrap this up because my brain is obviously like, no, nah, too much, too much time to turn off. But yeah, I'd love to do some kind of podcast. I feel like I have so much to talk about, like relationships, friendships, like mental health stuff, previous experiences. And I'd love to do it in podcast format because it would make me more comfortable because filming makes me uncomfortable because I just hate when people kind of pick apart my appearance because like I already have come so far with like accepting my appearance. And it's just really difficult when there's strangers on the internet that make you feel so disgusting and so ugly and a podcast is just my voice and I would prefer that I'd be a lot more comfortable because even when I film I try my best to be calm and relaxed but I'm a lot more calm and relaxed in person if that makes sense I always feel very stiff on camera and I've said that five million times so there's a part of me that's like do you, have you seen the real me like I hope you have and I hope you can kind of feel like you know the real me but I think in a podcast I'll be even more comfortable so I would love to do that and you know make it more on a mental health based thing because as you guys know like mental health awareness week mental health awareness month for me kind of rubs me up the wrong way because i'm like why is it just a month or a week like we should be treating people like this the whole year <laughs> i just want to I, I love being able to change the conversation of mental health to just helping people feel inspired or know their worth or 
I, I'm going through the journey myself and I just share things that have helped me and it just is great to have that connection because that's, I can't explain to you how much more that means to me than anything else. I would love to do something like that. I just need to figure out how I do it. Um, so yeah, like I said before, I don't know how many of you watch like H3 podcast. Oh my God, I'm so obsessed. I am an Ela Kleiner for life. I love her. I just made another Teddy Fresh order. It was like a hundred, like nearly a hundred pounds of shipping. I was like, Jesus. Worth it. I adore that podcast because I've been by myself for so long now that like I just like having them on in the background. It just feels like you've got, oh my God, I know it sounds kind of like sad, but it's like you've got this big group of friends and you know the inside jokes with the sound bites and all that stuff. So I became like a member on the H3 channel. I've never become a member on a YouTube channel before, but like I'm such a simp and like such a fangirl. So I was like, yes, I want to be able to chat during the live podcast. So I did that and then um, it puts you on their Discord, and I had never heard of Discord before. So I went on Discord and I was with like all the other H3 members and I was talking to them and I was like, I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, I could not figure out Discord for the life of me. I was like, what is this? Like, I feel old now, I can't understand this. Like, what is going on? And then a few people really randomly at the same time, it was very coincidental, had messaged me being like, have you ever thought about doing a Discord? And I did a Q&A on Instagram. People were like, you should do a Discord. And I was like, that sounds really fun. Like, I'd actually really like that. So. I created a Discord, I invited a bunch of people. As you're watching this, I will put a invite link on Instagram because you can only get on my Discord when I give you an invite and then it kind of, the invite deletes itself, gets invalid or whatever. Um, like 24 hours after I give you the invite. So make sure if you want to be part of it, it'll be on there. But it's so fun, like at 9 p.m. every night, we have like our Love Island chat, we all live chat. We, so, so many people have made amazing friends on there and like it makes me so happy and you probably see it's like making me come so alive because it's just such a cool, cool thing. And there's so many lovely people. I've got these amazing mods that help me so much and so grateful for them. So it's just an amazing platform of amazing people. So many people are connected. People are meeting for drinks in person from it. Like it's just great. And we talk about like we show each other our pets, tattoos, art, we ask for advice, like all sorts of stuff. So I will show you my discord if you want to get in so it's really really cool but i guess essentially i've just sort of reached a place in my life where i feel like a whole different version of myself who i actually really enjoy spending time with and that's something that has been a long time in the making and i needed a break from the internet to really tune into who i was without being told who i was by so many different people that don't know me if that makes sense so I almost feel like I just woke up to what's important in life and holding myself accountable for all the dumb shit that I've done <laughs> or nasty ways that I've treated other people that I just never again, just changed so much, honestly. And I've just decided to protect my mental health through my life choices. Like I said, like diet, alcohol, internet consumption. It just made, I don't know, I just literally woke up. Like it's like in TikTok, you know, when at the minute there's a trend when people are like, when you enter the next chapter of your life with different plot lines and different people, like that's how I feel. And I feel I'm about to transition into that proper next chapter of my life going to Melbourne. And I didn't actually mention this when I spoke about Melbourne, but there is a part of me that's quite anxious as well. Like I'm so excited with my family and I can't wait to go over there. And I feel like you guys see how much I just look at home in Australia back with my family. And a lot of people commented like you just suit it better than London. So I do obviously have um, a bit of like, I don't know, I'm a little bit scared because there's just a few bad memories from Melbourne but I just know that like I'm coming in a whole brand new version of myself. So I'm just hoping that like putting a lot of bad feelings to bed basically. So yeah, it's really weird, isn't it? When people know like an old version of yourself and you're just not that person anymore and you're just like, oh wow, like hopefully, you know, all these things can be squashed. Our life is so short that these grudges we hold, like they're just so, they're just poison to yourself, aren't they? Yeah, I'm very much just looking forward to that slow living and the thing is guys, you only get one life. You don't get to do a redo at the end of this. Well, we, we might, we just don't know, but <laughs> as far as we know, you can't. As I said earlier, you need to be in the driver's seat of your life. You can't have anyone else dictating which direction you're going in or where to go. They need to focus on their life. You need to focus on your life. You need to do things that make you happy. You need to be your own best friend and you need to have confidence that no matter where you go in life, you will be okay. Cause you've always been okay. And you've always overcome every single obstacle that's come your way. 
and you've come out stronger. So I want everyone to remember that as well and be proud of themselves for just realizing like how much you've already come through and not worrying so much about what's to come, but be proud of how far you've already come and done that on your own and you've got here on your own. Of course you've had help from other people along the way, but if you're doing the work, I'm so proud of you and I'm right here with you and we can do the work together. But you have one life and you just need to be true to yourself, do more things that make you feel like you and do more things that just feel right and get the damn tattoo. <laughs> I always say this, get the damn tattoo, get the damn piercing, wear the outfit that you really wanna wear but you're a little bit scared of judgment, please just wear it, oh my God. You'll be so glad that you did in hindsight. If you're like me and you're somewhere where you have to wear a bikini and you're covering yourself up and you're not getting involved and you're not getting in the pool, you're gonna regret that. You wanna just enjoy your life while you can. Just stop giving a shit about what everyone else thinks and everyone else expects of you and just do what you wanna do. Make yourself happy. Give yourself the life that you deserve. Do more things that make you feel whole, yourself, happy, fulfilled, whether that's baking or playing games or going out with friends or staying in and watching movies, whatever it is, just do more of what you want to do and stop living your life on other people's terms. Like express yourself how you want to do. I express myself through my tattoos. I've been getting a lot more tattoos lately because I've never been quite the fashion like savvy person. Like I kind of get the trends, but then I just am not as good as other people are at wearing them, I guess. So I express myself through my body art. It's art to me, it's my museum. My arm is my museum and like, I love it. I don't regret any of it. So if anyone's ever like, mm, about something that you do, it's not your problem, it's theirs. Honestly, I just feel, we don't know how long we have in this world. I don't even know if I'm gonna make it to old age because of the state of the world right now, I'm just sort of like living it day by day, being like, wow, another day I'm lucky to have because the whole world could just collapse on itself <laughs> as it seems like it's doing lately. So yeah, just please live that life you have to the full. And when people say that, they often think like, oh, do you mean like travel here, there, wherever? Like, of course, in a, in a sense, if you want, but that's not what I mean, I mean like, just live a life that is true to who you are. I lived so much of my life trying to be like everyone else and it never made me happy. I only really became happy when I started being myself. And that's what, that's the only advice <laughs> that I think is like extremely important that I can give you. That covers a lot of it, but I do want to ask before I leave, can you please comment below? Because I do still want to make content. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. <laughs> do we want moving vlogs? Do we want the moving to Australia vlogs? Do we want to document it all? hotel quarantine vlogs, all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in that, let me know. If you're interested in me playing games on Twitch and being live, let me know. And then if you are more on the podcast route, like while you're getting ready, me just talking about like, or interviewing people, whatever it is, I would love to know that too. I think the podcast thing for me is what kind of makes me the most excited. I would love to do that. I just really need to figure out like, how do I get there? Cause I waffle, but at least I can edit how long I talk for and like, condense it into a concise thing. Tell me if you're the same here, but I love long videos. I love just having them on the background and listening and feeling like we're just chatting. And podcasts are very similar to that for me. I have podcasts on all the time, so I would love to go down that route as well. But I think that's everything covered. Um, I am very excited to put this up. I'm very excited to hear your comments and read your comments and reply to your comments. So please feel free to just chat to me below. As well, if you wanna join the Discord, there will be a link on my Instagram, so make sure you go over there because that's where everything is most active on. But yeah, honestly, I love you to pieces. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate and I'm so grateful for you. And I just hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I can't wait to chat to you soon. Thank you, bye.